welcome to this tutorial where I will be showing you how to install this 3D printed switch plate that I designed into the Adventure 4 Spectrum. Now I've already done this mod to my Spectrum, so I cannot give you a step-by-step -step tutorial. Instead I will be telling you the general idea behind how to do it. The first step is to remove all of your stock wiring. Um, this is what you do when you're rewiring for a 2S LiPo, which is the purpose of this switch plate. Um, you need to remove the stock switch that sits inside of this little square here. Now you will have to trim down this little square, and I find the best way to do that is to remove your stock rev trigger, set your switch plate into that square, like so, and then take a sharpie and mark all the edges where it sticks above the surface of the switch plate. Then you'll take your side cutters or wire snips or whatever you use and trim all the plastic until it is flush with the switch plate. Uh, next you'll do your stock rewire, your standard semi-auto flywheel rewire for a 2S LiPo, which includes installing one of these super clicky micro switches. Um, next, you will run your wires underneath like so because this switch plate has a little wire channel built in so you can get that nice, neat wire organization. It looks oh so professional, like so. Next, you will need two number four, three fourths inch pan head sheet metal screws. You'll need two put those in through the two holes on the switch and they should, if your wires will allow them, line up with the two holes in the switch plate. Like so. So I like to put one in there, not quite tighten it down all the way, get your other hole lined up start it with your fingers and then tighten it down with your screwdriver until it is not going anywhere. You can choose to glue down your switch plate into the Spectrum grip if you'd like. I find that it stays in place just fine without glue, so I leave mine. Uh, one thing to note is you may need to trim the lever arm, depending on how long it is on your switch plate, so that it does not interfere with the return spring on the rev trigger. You may not even need the return spring if your switch is clicky enough, but I like to include it anyway. So we're going to add that back in, test it, activates, nice and clicky. Now this will work with the out of darts rev trigger, I have tested it, works just fine. Um, I also offer, if you're doing a LiPo rewire, I offer this LiPo battery tray that a 2S 950 graphene fits in perfectly with plenty of space here for your XT60 connectors and your voltmeter uh, warning thing. Um, to install that, super simple, just take out the four screws that come in the stock battery tray Toss this aside, use the same screws to install this one, and then run your wires through and wire up your XT60. Uh, the last thing I have on here is my Hadron muzzle kit for the Spectrum. That, the battery tray, and the switch plate can all be found on my Etsy. I have also uploaded the switch plate to Thingiverse for free because I have used many other switch plates free of charge, so I figured I would do the same courtesy. Uh, thank you for watching this video, I hope it was helpful, I hope you understood my rambling, and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully if I ever make another one. One more thing I keep forgetting to add is on the other side of the shell here, there is this little plus sign looking piece of plastic that you will also need to trim down flush with your side cutters or your wire snips 
so that it does not interfere with this micro switch. And as you can see, once you do that, it closes up nicely. You have a nice clicky rev switch.